And as Congress works on police reform, an ABC News investigation with our own stations is shedding light on racial disparities in police departments across the country. It found that in many cities, police departments are often overwhelmingly white compared to the neighborhoods they're actually policing. Diversity may also play a role in arrest trends. Our ABC News investigation found that in 2019 in metro areas where just 10 percent of police officers were people of color, black people were five times more likely to be arrested as white people. But in Metro areas where at least half of police officers were people of color, black people were only twice as likely to be arrested as their white counterparts. Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas has more. On this April night in North Las Vegas, Andrea Hollingsworth, a black woman who is deaf, displays her utter fear of police. As an officer approaches her on a Wednesday evening last month, she's nervous, agitated, and begins recording the encounter on Facebook Live. Her 11-year-old twins are watching from the back seat. Police are responding to a call about possible harassment. In a few seconds, the encounter starts to unravel. The officer pulls her out of the car. Ow, ow, come on, come on. Let's go. Hollingsworth, unable to read the officer's lips, is confused. Moments later, a scuffle ensues and ends up with Hollingsworth on the ground, handcuffed, her children screaming. <laughs> She later tells a local Fox station. My kids are afraid because of all of the incidents that have been happening recently. And, you know, they're raised black in this community. So when they see a police officer, they're also on high alert. Don't, 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 don't tell her to put her hands behind her back. Police issued a statement saying they take community complaints seriously and that in this case, the officer responded to a call about harassment and only briefly detained Hollingsworth after she did not comply with commands. The police noted that Hollingsworth indicated she was deaf, but police did not explain why they did not seek sign language services. In recent years, racially tinged police encounters have sparked tension in the Las Vegas region. In Las Vegas, people of color are the majority of the population but are policed by majority white law enforcement agencies, a trend that is national, according to a new ABC News investigation. What people have to recognize is that the institution of policing is inherently biased against people of color and low income, and it was designed to be that way. Okay. It's been that way for over 400 years. According to an ABC News Washington Post poll, only 10% of black people think that police treat black and white people equally. And advocates say one of the reasons some African Americans are mistrustful of police stems from the fact that in many localities, the police forces don't reflect the diversity seen in the communities they serve. Prior to becoming a police officer, I had some bad experiences with them. Uh, I was harassed on a couple occasions. My family were harassed on a couple occasions. An ABC News investigation with our own stations found striking racial disparities in most metro areas around the country between the racial makeup of police officers who are often overwhelmingly white and the demographics of the communities they're supposed to serve and protect. In 99 of the nation's 100 largest metropolitan areas, the share of officers that are white is larger than the share of residents who are white. That's according to our investigation's detailed analysis of census data. And in six of those American cities, and the surrounding metropolitan areas, including Pittsburgh, Knoxville, and Spokane, nine out of every 10 police officers are white. Recruitment of minorities has become more of a priority for police departments in recent years. But a leading organization of black law enforcement officers claims the efforts are falling short and in some cases are misdirected. The research we've conducted, and we've, we've done this both on a local level as well as nationally, gotten the same results. What we found is that they are not making any kind of substantial connections with the core constituencies in the community, uh, NAACP, the Urban League, uh, the Black and, and Latino churches. The issue of diversity comes amid calls for police reform, where departments are under intense pressure like never before, facing a spate of explosive issues. It feels like this is one of the most challenging times for police ever. Is that true? Oh, I don't think there's any question that this past year has challenged police in ways that they never have. You know, from COVID-19, 
to the George Floyd tragedy, to the demonstrations that occurred, and then all of this time, violent crime has been spiking in ways we haven't seen in 10 and 20 years all across the country. Minneapolis region where George Floyd was murdered by a white police officer, 88% of law enforcement officers are white, with minorities holding less than 12% of police jobs, even though people of color are 26% of the population. In Portland, Oregon, disparities are even more striking, people of color representing 28% of the population, with law enforcement 93% white. For example, Latinos are 12% of the region's population, but only 2% of the police force rosters. In San Jose, 36% of the community is Asian American, but only 10% of the police force are. Some cities have department rosters that more accurately reflect local racial demographics. Among them, New Orleans, Jackson, Mississippi, San Diego, Baltimore, Honolulu, and San Antonio. Ryan Tillman, a corporal with the Chino, California Police Department, says he sought a career as a police officer in part because he believes diversity can ease racial tensions. And it also helps kind of de-escalate situations without even opening your mouth. Does it always work? No. But in my experience, I've seen that when you can relate to the people that you're serving, it helps our job tremendously. Our thanks to Pierre Thomas for that report. And let's bring in retired NYPD chief of detectives and ABC News contributor Robert Boyce for more on this. Robert, thanks for being here. You know, first off, as a retired NYPD chief of detectives, what's your reaction to those statistics in Pierre's piece about diversity in police departments compared to the communities they patrol and how that might impact arrests? I, I, I saw the piece, and uh, good to be with you here today, Diane. Thank you. Uh, I saw the piece, and I heard the, I heard the numbers, and uh, I was real surprised by it, to be honest with you. I came on in the uh, police department in uh, 1983, and I saw the, um, how, how um, lopsided it was. And I see when I left in 2018, the changes are uh, dramatic. Um, so diversity does matter. It's, uh, it's up to the uh, police chief and the, and, the, and, the, and the elected officials to get out the, the word and, and bring more and more uh, police officers, uh, minority police officers on to reflect demographics of that city or that population. So I see it, I think it's important to, to do, not only that, but also in their uh, executive ranks as well. So people can see that there's a, there's a, they're, they're represented. And it, it, does, it does ease situations. I've worked with many uh, officers who were able to ease the situation. They felt more trustful of, a, say, a black or a Hispanic officer than myself. It's, it's tough to, um, uh, to take it initially, but then you have to understand what went on in that person's life to create that issue. So I, I was surprised at some of the cities that have not. Uh, I think New York is, uh, is somewhat of an example. We've uh, gone out of our way, actually, to, uh, to make sure this happens on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Community meetings, college campuses, uh, events that happen. Have, have, your, um, have your recruitment officers out there to get more and more people on. And recruiting minorities has become more of a priority for many police departments in the last few years. But we also heard in Pierre's piece, the National Association of Black Law Enforcement Officers saying that the efforts are, are one, falling short, but also that departments then aren't doing enough to actually connect to the minority communities that they're policing. What's your response to that? I think we can always do a better job. And I, again, I, I see, you talk to different police departments around the country when you go to these uh, 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 international uh, association of chiefs of police, and you look for that. You look to see if they're representative and, um, and, and the, the talent levels within each one. Uh, it's something that should be done nationally, um, part, part, probably part of this uh, legislation that's going forward in Washington, uh, should include something on that, on that, on that thing, so more, more uh, financial support from the feds. Uh, could, could force that even more. So it's, it should happen. We, we've, uh, we're seeing it happen in some cities, but not at all. And so what's the best way, do you think, to get police departments to more closely resemble and better connect to the communities they're policing? Again, you, you, want, to, you, want, you want someone to be the face of, uh, of your department. Uh, you want someone to re who reflects that community to get out there and, and make sure to, to go to community meetings. I've, I've spoken to so many church, church groups, uh, community groups around the, around the thing, that's around the city. That needs to happen on a daily basis. It's not something you just do for a while and then stop. It needs to be done on a daily basis to get out there and get the message out that we need, we need people, we need people of color on our departments. Uh, so it, it's a better uh, process for the community as well. 
And the Senate is now working on the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. It's already passed the House. What's your take on that bill and the provisions being discussed right now? So there's some good and bad in that, Diane, and uh, I'm following it very closely because I think it's, it's it, as all law enforcement executives across the country are, are as well. And, it's, and, I, and I believe there's some really good stuff there, uh, mandating body cameras. Um, that's the way of the future. Everybody should have it. New York City detectives do not wear uh, body cameras, and that has to change. They want to, but it hasn't happened yet. So prohibit chokeholds, absolutely. Racial profiling uh, mandates, absolutely. These things are all good, and I think we can come together on that. Some of the things that are sticklers here. The uh, qualified immunity. Officers are, um, are are against this for a very good reason. They don't mind risking their lives and their health every day, but they don't want to risk their family's future. They're doing work on behalf of that, uh, that entity, that department, and that city. And um, the only one who can be sued in law enforcement right now is the police officer. Um, uh, prosecutors are not. They're immune. And so are ju uh, judges. They're immune as well. So the only ones in, pro in the process are officers who can be sued. Um, and it's, uh, it's not fair to the rank-and-file police officers. Uh, prohibit no-knock warrants. Uh, I can tell you that uh, they should be held to a very high standard. They are in New York uh, because I've applied for them, got them. You have to show there's a threat to the officer. Um, you're going to have this. So they should be limited, but they still should be atta attainable. Um, again, and restricting transfer of military equipment. Uh, we use the, we are in a terrorist world. We have to have that equipment. So some of these bills, things, there's some sticklers here that, that, that are arguable and that I think we can come to consensus on. Uh, most of it is good, the bill. I saw it. I said, this, we need these national changes. What happens elsewhere in the country affects us here in New York and, here, and other cities as well. Um, and the prime example of that is the George Floyd incident. All right, former NYPD Chief Detectives Robert Boyce. Always great to have you, Robert. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.